officially. So a few announcements, sort of talking us through what's all happening. So we are going to be gathering unless numbers change. It's been not good um, in, the, in the county, in the city, in the state, in the whole United States, things have been bad. So I don't know where that's going, um, but I think what we have to be um, thoughtful of is flexibility and we may have to discontinue gathering. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so we will gather, we'll enter through this door. Um, we'll have a cleansing station here in front of the baptismal font, you know, cleansing, get it? Um, and face masks if you um, need them. We didn't know that somebody was going to be donating some to us and somebody else donated some um, disposable ones. So we have a variety of face masks available. If the sanctuary is at capacity, I will put the sign out um, and hopefully not have to shut that door because that's our only airflow. So uh, we're gonna try not to shut the door, but I would put the sign out if we're at 50 folks and don't want anybody else in. Next weekend, I'm gonna be gone um, and Laura Yashichek, our office administrator, will lead the worship service and she will preach. Our, our, the, Virel and Klein will sing the hymn next weekend. Lynn will play. Uh, Dana is singing the hymn today, so we're grateful for that. Anybody who would like to volunteer to sing the hymn at worship, except Todd. Um, anybody else is welcome to let uh, Chris or I, or, uh, I was looking at Chris, um, to let Lynn or I know. Uh, she knows all the hymns, so do I. I've picked all the hymns for the entire summer. So every week, um, the only thing that will be sung will be the hymn of the day, the hymn that we normally do after the sermon. In, in two weeks, on the 11th and 12th of, of um, July, we'll attempt to resume communion. And we've, we've put this together in a way that I think will be pretty safe. Laura and I will wear rubber gloves and we will put wafers into small souffle cups, disposable souffle cups. We'll do that on Saturday afternoon. There'll be a table right in the center where you'll be able to come forward, receive, take your souffle cup with your wafer. And then in the uh, railing here, probably a lot of you are aware of that, but there are actually cup holders. And so we will place um, pre-filled cups of juice and wine in the holder. So you'll be able to come forward one side at a time. We'll put some six mark foot markings with red tape along the center. Um, and you'll be able to come receive your wafer, receive your wine or juice, and then we'll have a, a disposable uh, a wastebasket on the side to drop your things in as you go back to your seat. So I think it will work pretty well. If you're uncomfortable doing that, feel free to, to not. Um, if you're uncomfortable taking the juice and wine because you know that we've had a touch a few times and you just want to use the wafer, that's fine. Um, all of those things are, are acceptable. You, I think it's important that you're doing or, and anybody's doing what they feel comfortable and what they feel is good for the people that are around them. That's what it's all about. So at 9 o'clock will always be available on Zoom if you'd like to worship that way. And Terry will record every week and put something up throughout the week on Facebook and Vimeo and YouTube, um, as he has in the past, but it's not gonna be as elaborate as he has in the past, because when we did um, videotaping in the past, he, he had multiple cameras all over, and he would cut and paste and put all kinds of things together and make Lynn look good and sound good and cut out the bloopers. Um, we are hoping that Terry saved everything and that he'll put together a blooper video because there's some darn good ones along <laughs> the way. Um, and, and anytime, I've never had a chance to say this because Easter was so long ago, but anytime you see um, a, an empty tomb appear on your screen, it's covering something up. Okay, so a couple of times Terry said to throw that empty tomb up there because he couldn't uh, get rid of whatever was there that wasn't good. So uh, just be aware that if all of a sudden everything's going along and you see an empty tomb, well, we're grateful for the empty tomb, but there's a reason it's on your screen. So and we'll do that. I also want to note that uh, we're not using the lower level, of course, and that's part of sanitation. And we're going to get used to coming in here and going out through the narthex. We'll do that today. Don't exit from here. I want us to get used to that because Gary 
um, will be cleaning, sanitizing the sanctuary. And we're going to um, put his stuff up here on Sunday mornings so that as you're going out, he can start from this end and clean back. That's particularly important at 9 o'clock um, because we don't have all that much time before we want to open the door at quarter to 10. When we get done at 9.30, we got to get sanitized bathroom, doors, anything that has been touched or, or where people have been. So we'll keep working on, we'll keep doing that. So be flexible, bear with us. Then on, um, on July 15th, on Wednesday, July 15th, we will, I will start a Bible study from 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning, every Wednesday for the rest of the summer. We're going to be studying the book of James, and we're going to do it right here in the sanctuary, where we'll practice everything we're practicing now, and it'll give people another opportunity to connect with their faith community, um, as we do what we typically do, and that's we do Bible study here. And so we'll, we'll do Bible study, and we'll spread out, and maybe you'll find that a better option than a weekend worship, or maybe you'd like to do both, or... Maybe you don't really care at all, but you're just desperate to get out of your house and go to some place that's relatively safe um, and, and comfortable. So everybody's welcome to come to the James Bible Study. Bring your own Bible and bring your own beverage because we will not be making beverage. We simply lock the fellowship room completely um, so we won't do communal things, but you're welcome to bring your own coffee or water or whatever you'd like. How you're going to drink that through your face mask, I don't know, that's not my problem. Dana has is making some that will allow you to uh, have wine through the opening. So if you want to talk to Dana, um, she's got that, that down pat. I think you can probably drink an old-fashioned through the two doors. <laughs> okay. I've placed the, um, some offering plates throughout the sanctuary. As soon as the uh, service ends today, and we've been going exactly 30 minutes, um, as soon as the service ends, I'm going to move the... the computer up to the to the pulpit to plug them in so that if they want to speak their sound and um, Greg will come forward and we'll turn this microphone on he can start the meeting from there we have one topic um, and that's to approve the council's recommendation for a new boiler system and if we do that today um, Patty will take minutes if we do that today we can have it installed in time for the heating season this winter which would be pretty darn nice, however, because let me tell you, if we're setting like this, it's going to be chilly in here without heat too. <laughs> you don't even have good body heat. So any questions anybody has as we sort of start this unusual next phase? Questions, comments? Nancy? I just want to say Terry is doing a fantastic job. Yeah. I have viewed other churches, what they're doing, various things, and I'm just really proud and happy of how ours looks. It's professionally done. Um, everything sounds so well because of how he does it. I love the putting on the musicians all, all on the screen at the same time and from different camera angles, and so we can see close. I mean, one of the joys of watching online is you really get to see me up close <laughs> and Lynn and anybody who's singing as will be very different for you folks on Zoom right now because we're kind of at a, at a distance and, and you're not used to that. So, and, and you're going to have more of that distance feeling, my guess is, when Terry um, puts up the, the service today and in the future because he doesn't have that same, I don't know what he'll do, but we'll let that up to you. So thanks, Nancy, for bringing it up. Thank you, Terry. All right, I will invite us to um, silence and we'll prepare our hearts for worship this morning during Lynn's prelude.
When we were slaves of sin, we were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did we get from the things of which we are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that we have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage we get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Thank you, God, for welcoming us through Jesus. Open our hearts to welcome the stranger, the prophet, the neighbor, the enemy, and the little ones. Make our hearts compassionate to proclaim the grace of your gospel through our words, actions, and our hospitality. In your name we pray. Amen. The gospel reading assigned to this weekend is from the 10th chapter of Matthew. Jesus said to the 12, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. I mentioned at the earlier service, one of them, that the, the advantage of being a guest um, soloist of the hymn is you get to hear my sermon three times, like Lynn does, and that's truly a, a gift that I give to you. Um, and then as I was sitting there this morning, I also thought, Dana, when I leave here this morning, I will have heard 12 verses of Amazing Grace, and I don't even like the song to begin with. <laughs> so today in that little reading, Jesus talks about hospitality, welcoming receiving, sharing with those in need. And you know that the Gospels are full of stories that talk about hospitality and frequently call on us, the followers of Christ, the disciples, to be hospitable and to welcome everyone. And so that Gospel is a little ironic and weird today on our first day back here in this sanctuary. I don't pick the text. The texts are part of the lectionary. Whenever they set the lectionary up 50 years ago, this text just landed on this day. Here we are, people of God, followers of Christ, believers in hospitality of welcome. And I just about put a sign out that said, don't come in, we're full. We're deliberately keeping people away from this sanctuary and away from the opportunity to hear the good news and away from the holy meal. And even those of us who are here have to wait two more weeks. I didn't even put the return, like Chris put the return to worship sign, the, the times for worship out on the sign in front of the building. I didn't do that because Todd would have a fit because we would have taken down the food pantry. No, we didn't do that. We didn't put the signs out. We didn't publicize that we were coming back. And we did that. We were motivated by one simple thing. And it's ugly. We did it because we want to keep people away. And that is so hard for me to do. You know me. You know I love it when we got all kinds of people in this room, when this worship space is filled, when we've got visitors and guests, and when 40% of the people who come to senior lunch and play euchre are, are not members of the congregation. I love to have everybody in the room. And even those of us who did get in right now had to sanitize our hands, and you got to wear those stupid masks that cover your face, and you can't sing your favorite hymns, and you're forced to sit on chairs that are six feet away from anybody else that you care about in the sanctuary. None of this feels hospitable and welcoming, and none of it is, and we know that. 
A part of the reading today also includes a call that says to, we are called to assist the little ones. Now that's not necessarily referring to children or to short people. Little ones is referring to anyone, anyone regardless of size, anyone who feels disenfranchised or who feels powerless in life. Little ones in, might include people who are poor or people who lack the necessary resources or people who are the victims of oppression and hate. And Jesus in that text calls us to welcome the little ones. And all we have to do is give them a cup of cold water. And you know how wonderful a cup of cold water feels. Actually, I'd like one right now. Um, <laughs> how a simple cup of cold water can be pretty phenomenal sometimes. So we can take this text today, this little bitty text, and apply it to two significant events, significant issues happening in our city, in our world, in our society right now. First of all, we're dealing, we're still dealing, and it's getting worse again. I'm so frustrated with COVID-19. We're dealing with that pandemic, and we're getting tired of it. It keeps going on, and we can't live life the way we want to live life. We watch the number of positive cases increase, and that becomes frustrating, it becomes anxiety-laden, and all of us are more anxious than usual. Before I look, when we packed this morning, I double-checked my anti-anxiety medication to be sure that I had plenty for the next two weeks. But what may feel, this is what we have to think about, what may feel like inhospitality today in this room may in reality be a sign of welcome and a sign of compassion for everyone. The rigid protocol that we're all willing to follow and the discouragement of gathering is all part of our assurance that we are taking care of the little ones, that we're taking care of those who are vulnerable to COVID-19. And the fact is we're all vulnerable to it, some more than others. Wearing those face masks, which I'm not wearing right now, so you can hear every word that I have to say. Wearing those face masks and keeping our distance, that's not about ourselves. It's not about our rights. It's not about our freedom of choice. All those things that you're doing, you are doing for someone else. You are doing those things because you have compassion for other people. And part of being hospitable is being concerned for each other. And here at Lakeview, as long as I'm around, and I hope that's a while yet, we are going to continue to be concerned for all the people, including the little ones. And some of the things that we're going to do and already are doing out of concern for others may not feel very hospitable and may certainly feel very restrictive. And then we have the matter of racial disparity that's been going on in our nation probably since it's, well, certainly since it's, I was going to say founding, but I've tried not to say founding because this nation was never founded. It always existed, and there were always people here, so we didn't find this nation. But we've got this issue of racial disparity going on. We have groups of people who have historically and continue today to be, to be disenfranchised and oppressed, and people who are without a voice simply because of their skin color or their ethnic background. And we are called again in the gospel reading today, we're called again to respond to that problem. We're called to give folks a simple cup of cold water in this way by expressing that all black lives matter and that the mistreatment of people because of their skin color or because of their ethnic background must end. It must end now in all individuals, in all structures, and in institutions, and systems, and even within the church in our society. And so to today, I invite us to consider, in these odd times, how it is that we are unusually extending hospitality in the world. Okay? Because the way you're doing it today may not be the way you did it in the past. And i got to tell you, I only go to Woodman's every two weeks, and they're really pretty good in there, but it, it bothers me when I meet people who are not wearing a mask, because it's about me, not about them. I'm wearing a mask for their sake, and they're not wearing a mask for my sake. And you want me to go on and on about this? Because I would. <laughs> 
So I invite us to consider today how these clumsy face masks and all those other things going the right way in the aisles and the grocery store, how all of those things are signs and symbols of hospitality. I invite us to consider today how we're going to leave this sanctuary through the back door and out the narthex and respond and how we're going to leave our easy chairs for those of you sitting around on Zoom. And I can see you. Chris Kirst is eventually going to have to get dressed. Kathy Benson, you're going to have to brush your teeth eventually. And how are you going to get out of your easy chairs and out of this sanctuary? And what are we going to do right now? Because we are followers of Christ. And we want to end racial disparity. I want to invite you all to consider that as we hear Dana sing a song about God's amazing grace for all people. And what I want you to do this morning, because a lot of people do this to me. Oh, I love that song. I really like that song. I don't want you to like it anymore. I want you to take that song and put the, 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 the information in that song about God's universal grace, put that into action within your lives when you leave this place this morning. Dana, would you please come forward? God, you welcome each of us. You give us the gifts of forgiveness and new life, and we return our thanks by trying to be faithful to you. And when we falter, we are grateful that you were willing to pick us up and give us second chances. Allow us to give your people a second chance as well. Move our hearts to express your call to hospitality by responding to situations of injustice, oppression, inequality, and poverty. We give thanks for the church and for our sanctuary. We pray that everyone who comes here will be comfortable gathering with rigid protocol to protect our neighbors. Give us wisdom to make wise decisions regarding the virus and about racial injustice. Be with our congregation council and our congregation as we move forward with our heating system. Thank you for the ability to continue to serve your people in our food pantry through the recent blood drive 
and through our gifts to porch light. Bring comfort to all who grieve. Bring healing hope to all who struggle with poor health, including Ellen, Lynn, Georgia, Julie, and all those whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Together, I invite you to join me as we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Then we'll offer a piece of music as you have an opportunity to meditate this morning. Receive the blessing. May God, who created you, the world, and everything in it, and Jesus, the one sent by God to redeem you and give you the gift of salvation, and the Holy Spirit of God moving through you every day, grant you love, hope, peace, and joy. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Zoom right now. Uh, raise your hand and Greg or I, who's ever standing here, will call on you to share your question. So I want you to know that everybody in the room is going to hear you, um, so don't do something stupid. Chris, stop clearing your throat in the microphone. Go for it. It's going over the whole sanctuary. <laughs> okay, Greg, I'll get my new mask. You can take your mask off to talk. Thank you, Pastor. Do you need a copy of the... Later, we'll, 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 we decades to come, and I, I think that we'll be able to do that. So let's go ahead and call the meeting to order right now. And I believe we have a quorum. Yes, there are 30 people. There's 30 people, good. Okay, the, the first thing that I'd like to do is, is uh, 
recognize and thank the HVAC committee. Um, what these, these folks um, are incredible. Okay, we're this is Todd Shack, it's Amy Lukey, it's Terry Warnke, Gail Langer, Varellen Klein, and Chris Dupree. And John Frank. And John Frank. And then Lyle Pinsky was. Oh, it was Lyle, Lyle was also part of that. Okay, yeah, I think it was back in January, maybe of 2018, that um, Lakeview decided to assemble that committee. And since then, as you know, they've just they've been hard at work doing all kinds of things. Um, these people did an outstanding job investigating, presenting, and selecting the best value for installing new boilers here at Lakeview. Uh, not to mention the countless hours that they put in on this project. It's just unbelievable. The committee solicited four bids from local contractors, which were Harker, General, RG, and Hillstead. And after careful evaluation of each, they made a recommendation to the church council for approval which was unanimous, unanimously approved at our June uh, 9th meeting. To keep in step with our Constitution, which is a spend amount of more than 3% of our annual budget, the church then notified all of our members in advance of this special meeting, which is why we're here today. The recommendation was that we go with the bid from RG Heating and Air Conditioning, who has also done previous work for us. They put in the hot water heater, uh, they also installed the uh, air conditioning downstairs. The competitive, competitive pricing, along with the great track record, finalized this decision. The current bid from RG totals nearly $50,000 to complete, which includes the installation of two new boilers and new controls for the whole system. The target for the installation would be to start on about October 1st, in advance of the colder uh, of, of the cold season's arrival. Actually, it's in August. Oh, it's in August first. Excuse me, that's August first. Um, the good news is that Lakeview currently has nearly forty thousand dollars to apply to the project, which means we still need to cover approximately a ten thousand dollar gap. Uh, this gap can be addressed in a couple of ways. We could start a fund drive or we could continue to give individually as we have in the past. And fortunately, there's another piece to all of this that we would like to bring to your attention. Lakeview was given a gift earlier this year in the amount of $10,000 uh, without designation, which could also be applied to this important project. If we use those funds, the project is basically covered and it's possible that there could be a slight deviation of the current bid due to unforeseen circumstances during installation. The, the bid is, it, 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 it probably won't be exactly what they quoted to us, but it'll be really close. Um, so basically, that's where we are with this. And I'd like to ask anybody if, if they have any comments or a discussion that they'd like to talk about at this time. <coughs> Then I, I would like to call for a motion to gain congregational approval of the RG bid for installation of the boilers here at Lakeview. I will look that we go to the council's recommendation. Okay. Dana? I will second. All right. Chris seconded it. All right. Let, that will, we'll, we'll call for a, a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All against, say nay. All right, it's all in favor, great. Motion carries. I, I, at this point, I think that concludes the meeting. It does. And uh, thank you again, everybody. Move to adjourn. Oh, yeah. Move to adjourn. Okay, all right. Chris, you, Dana seconded it? All right. Who seconded it? Dana. Dana. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, <clears throat> meeting's adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Um, exit through the narthex. Uh, depart. Stay safe. Wear your mask.